放松。Reverend F.C. Barnes, one of my, my favorite gospel singer, real anointed man, Reverend F.C. Barnes. Good morning to you, my brothers and sisters, and thank you again for tuning in to our morning's devotion. And, uh, you know, time moves so quickly. You know, we're at the end of another week and we're thankful to God for life. Thankful to God that he has given you strength to face tomorrow, to face each day. You know, God has given in, in our morning's devotion. I know that God has been good um, to us. Right? And thanks again for everything. Bless up all our churches, our church members. Um, just bless you up this morning and really pray that God will gives, give to you strength each day. All right. Um, I am down in the coming down in this area of dealing with waiting on God. Yesterday we looked at some very, very important aspect on the, 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 the topic yesterday, um, while waiting while waiting while waiting and uh, my takeaway yesterday personally was that while waiting we must have an expectation yes wait with an expectation but at the same time recognizes that god can show up in a different way we ought to realize that that even though we are waiting for god to come through in a particular way god is not limited to your way and to my way but god is sovereign and he will come through or he sees best for us as christians yeah and so this morning let me orion in sharing with us um briefly this morning now um <clears throat> there are so many messed up lives that are out there because people did not wait on the Lord. So many messed up lives. Because people didn't wait upon the Lord. People wanted to do what they want to do in their timing and in their way. And they did not wait upon the Lord to hear what the Lord has to say. So there are many messed up lives. There are many missed opportunities yes many missed opportunities again because of the same thing yeah many many missed opportunities because we do not wait upon the lord we miss the opportunities that god wants to bring in our life that god wants to to manifest yeah messed up opportunities we have seen many broken relationships and relationships now not speaking to a husband and wife relationship it could also be parents and children. It could also be co-workers. It could also be members. You know, it can just be any relationships, all right? We see out there because people do not wait on the Lord. There are so many broken relationships. Yes, there are so many bad deals with Christians. So many Christians get into bad deals, deals that were 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 not for them it might be for others but it wasn't for them for you for me and and because we did not learn to wait on the lord then we end up in some deals that cause us to grieve a lot so there are so many things brothers and sisters if we learn to wait upon the lord if we learn just to wait on the lord all right waiting is the process of becoming what god wants us to be yes it is that process of of coming under the umbrella the authority of god 
yes that allows us to make for us to be all that god wants us to be brothers and sisters so please brothers and sisters i i appeal to you i i beseech you as i'm beseeching myself let us learn how to to wait upon the lord a little more yes don't be in the quick fix the, the, the quick fix many times do not lead down the right path the bible said there's a path there's a part that a man take, but that part leads to the destruction. Yes, let us wait upon the Lord. God is not slow. God is not slack concerning his promises. God will come through. God will fulfill his purpose in your life. But God wants us to learn, brothers and sisters, to wait upon him, to wait diligently um, before him. All right. So this morning we will continue now on the whole matter of, 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 of um, while waiting. Yes. So yesterday we, we look on a few things while waiting, what we should do while waiting. Watch with expectancy, but prepare for the unexpected answer while waiting. While waiting, put your hope in his words. Yes, put your words in his your hope in his words. We gave passage scriptures for those yesterday. While waiting, trust in the Lord and not in your own understanding. Yes, while waiting, be strong and take courage. Yes. Uh, and so this morning, let me now continue. While we are waiting on God, yes, while we are waiting, see it as an opportunity to experience God's goodness. While we are waiting on God, see it as an opportunity to experience God's goodness. Yes. Um, in Lamentation um, chapter 3, in, in chapter 3 and verse 25 let me just read that for us please um yes it says the lord goes so we see that what it says the lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul who that seek him good to that person is one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Or the salvation of the Lord, the word salvation here means the, the deliverance of the Lord. It is good that one should wait quietly before the Lord. Brothers and sisters, there are times you and I need to wait quietly. Remember, I said in the Monday, most of the times in scriptures, when it speaks to waiting on God, it speaks of an active waiting. Yes, an active waiting. Doing something, serving. We see it with Joseph. But there are times when waiting on the Lord means a quiet waiting. And here, Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 26 said, It is good that one should wait quietly. Yes. There are times you and I, need to wait quietly have you ever had time in your life have you ever had those moments in your life where you wake up in the morning or whatever time of the day it is for you you're doing it but you wake up in the morning or in the night and you just go into a room and, and lock yourself or if it's you alone you, you sit around your table or in your bedroom and, and you just wait quietly you, you read a passage you sing a song Maybe you're reading a text, you're preparing something from the word. And as you read the word, you just stop and just wait quietly before the Lord. Brothers and sisters, God speaks. God speaks to us, my brothers and sisters. God speaks to us in those quiet times. You know, those sometimes those God speaks to us anytime, whether it's loud or quiet. But what I'm, I'm saying now, there are moments in our life as Christians. Yes. When we need quiet time, as it says, when we should wait on him, according to Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 26, when we should wait quietly for the Lord, quietly for our salvation, quietly for our deliverance. So sometimes you and I come before God without a word. Just being quiet before God, God hearing your heart, the, the, the pulse of your heart, the, the beat of your heart, the interest of your heart. God hears it without a word being said, brothers and sisters, as you sit before the word and just wait quietly for the Lord. 
waiting quietly before the Lord, brothers and sisters. What God wants us to do at times, while we wait, while we wait, yes, we ought to recognize we can wait before the Lord because he will answer. Yes, he will, he will answer. The next thing is that while we wait, while we wait, resist fretting, resist worry, refrain from anger and be still. In Psalms 37, and let me just read that very quickly. In Psalms 37, it, 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 it speaks to that in, 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 the, in Psalms 37. Yes, Psalms 37 and, and, and verse 7 and 8. It says, oh, yes, it says here, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not, worry not over the one who prosper in his ways or over the man who carry out evil device. Refrain from anger. And for sake wrath, fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. Praise God. Praise God, brothers and sisters. So what I'm saying, while we are waiting, resist the temptation of fretting. Resist the temptation of worry while we are waiting. Refrain from anger because you see the truth is that when you and I begin to worry and to fret it will lead to anger while we are waiting and while we are waiting and we are angry it almost short circuit what God wants to do in our lives. Alright? Is it easy? I am not saying it's easy and it's just one two like that but with the spirit help with God's help you and I can wait upon the Lord in a way without um, refraining as it said resist fretting and worrying and i love what it says in the psalm be still before the lord and wait patiently for him be still and wait patiently for him fret not yourself over the one who prosper in his ways. There are times, brothers and sisters, as Christians, we are worried. We, 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 we see people are prospering. We see the unsafe prospering. We see they are doing well. And we are wondering, God, we are waiting so long. God, I'm your child. I'm your son, God. Father, I have been waiting so long. And watch the Lord. Watch how the wicked them are prosper. Watch how other people, Lord. When am I time? Lord, wait quietly before the Lord. You see, brothers and sisters, God don't make any mistakes. And your time, when your time come, no devil from hell can stop your time because you have waited patiently on the Lord. Yeah, you have waited patiently on the Lord. So he said, fret not yourself over those who prosper, the evildoers, over those who prosper, over the man who carries out his evil device, the person who is carrying out their evil device. And it seems that if they are prospering. The Bible said, don't worry, don't fret yourself over that. So while you wait, resist from fretting because when you and I see other people seems to be being blessed, when you see other people who have been going through situation and now it turned for them, you and I do not know, brothers and sisters, how long those persons were waiting on God. What you are seeing is the, is the end result. You are seeing the deliverance. You are seeing the breakthrough of that person. But you have not seen the nights of Christ. You have not seen the night when those persons cried before God. You have not seen and heard those moments of groaning coming from those persons' life. You have not seen, my brothers and sisters, the earth. You have not seen, my brothers and sisters, what has happened to those persons before. You are now seeing the result of waiting, but you have not seen the process of waiting. And sometimes as Christians, when we see the result of other people waiting, the breakthrough, the deliverance, God coming through, God waiting on God, God does come through with some ear in our life. We see the, the, the deliverance, the end result of people, but you and I do not see the process of their waiting. You and I have not seen the process oh God brought them through. You and I did not um, saw that. 
Yes? And so we see the end result. But you did not saw the scars. Brothers and sisters, there are people who have learned to wait on God in scripture and people of our generation and in the early church. Yes, there are people who have learned to wait on God and we have seen what God has done. We have heard testimonies, brothers and sisters. But the truth is that if you and I ought to be honest with ourselves, we wouldn't be vexed or be angry with those persons because brothers and sisters yes there was a process in those persons life you have not seen the process of the man the woman earth you have not seen the process when they were going through you have not seen the process when they were a night without food you have not seen the process when we were hurting and crying before god and god gave. brothers and sisters you see when god give us the ministry you see when god is doing some good things through the ministry but you have not seen the Days and the nights when ministries were rough, when, 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 when tears is only our pillars. You have not seen those moments. What you are seeing is the breakthrough, is the coming through. But there is a purpose in the process of waiting. There's a purpose in the process of waiting. And so don't bad mind anybody. Don't jealous of anybody when God had do things in them life. No man, get rid of that. That's not a part of us. Because you know what? You didn't see the process of that person waiting. Yes. Yes, my brother, the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Can't. It has never produced the righteousness of God. So while waiting, while waiting, resist. Resist fretting and worry and move away from anger and be still. That's what it says right here. Move away from anger. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. Verse 8. While you and I are waiting and we are fretting, the Bible says it tends only, only to evil. It causes us to think no negative. It causes us to think evil. It causes us even to blame God. It causes people to walk away from Christendom. It causes people to throw in the towel. Some of us, might be this morning, maybe not you who are listening, or just might be you who are listening this morning. Somebody is on the departure launch from the faith. The departure launch of Christianity, of your solid faith in Jesus Christ. You're on the departure launch. Wait on God. Let God speak to your heart. Wait on God. Somebody's on the, 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 the departure launch of giving up this morning. You have waited so long. You have waited so long. You are tired of waiting. Can I encourage you this morning? Wait, I see on the Lord. Wait, I see on the Lord. Wait, I see on the Lord. So while we wait, the next point is this. While we wait, believe that God who saves you hear your cries micah 7 and verse 7 let me read micah 7 and verse 7 but as for me i will look to the lord i will wait for the god of my salvation my god will hear me he said micah says i will look to the god of my salvation because i know my god will hear me brothers and sisters while you wait while you wait Believe that God who saves you hears your prayer. Yes, my sisters, if you don't know the story, don't envy nobody. Be happy for people. Because you don't know people's stories. That's so true. We don't know people's stories. Yeah? We see people end result, but we don't know the stories that person has gone through. Praise God. Believe that God who saves you hears your cry. Yeah, man, God hears your cry. And listen to this, listen to this. If we know, if we knew everything, if we knew everything that God knows, we would believe him and wait. If we only know what God knows, brothers and sisters, we wait. You see, we are limited. So in our limitations, yes, in our limitations, we tend to do things. 
But if we just learn to wait on the Lord. And my final point for this morning, and tomorrow we are not going to look on some of the, the things that I said, the, 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 the downside to waiting. Because there is a downside to it, but that downside don't have to stay. It, it's a downside because we are not trusting as we ought to. Yeah, But, but my next point is, while we wait, I love this one. This is my takeaway for the day. I don't know what's your takeaway. This is my takeaway. Yesterday, one was my takeaway. This is my takeaway. While you wait, remember God is doing something bigger than you. Hallelujah. While you wait, remember God is doing something bigger than you. God is doing something bigger than you. Let me just read um, um, Psalms 105. Uh, Psalms 1, 105 here. Yes, God is doing something bigger than you. Yes, God is doing something bigger than you. Psalms 105. And um, verse 16 down. It says, When he summoned a famine on the land and broke all supply of bread, he had sent a man. I want to listen to this. God says after he has broken, after he has broken all supply of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph. So God sent Joseph ahead. Now listen to this. Who was sold as a slave. His feet were earth with fetters. His, his, his neck was put in a collar of iron until when he had said, until what, until what he has said come to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Listen to me, brothers. Listen to me, sisters. While you are waiting, while you are waiting, remember God is doing something bigger than you. God is doing something bigger than you. Now, the Bible says during that period in the land of Israel, yes, it says when he summoned famine to the land. So God sent a famine to Egypt. Yes. And God break, broke all the supply of bread. There were no supply of bread in Egypt. Then it says, then God send a man. Praise God. He was sent by God. God sent a man, which is Joseph. But listen what happened to Joseph. Yes, God sent him. But his feet were earth with fetter. His neck was put in a collar of iron. It spoke to Joseph's situation. You see, brothers and sisters, while you and I are waiting, Joseph got a dream that he would be the man. He would be the person who people bow to. He would be, you, you, you know, that, that star that he saw, that, that sheep that he saw standing up and all the other bowing to it. Joseph saw that. And Joseph was a dreamer. God gave him a dream and said, you know, this is going to be manifested. But from the time of his dream to the manifestation of his dream, he was waiting. And while he was waiting, what I'm saying, God was doing something bigger than Joseph. While you are waiting, God is doing something bigger than you. Your little waiting is not just only about you. It's about God's purpose in your life. It's about how oh, God will use you. It's about how oh, God will minister to you. God has something bigger than you, man. Don't worry about you. Something out there is bigger than you that God has in store. While you wait, God has a ministry that's bigger than you. Whatever that ministry is, whether it's to clean church, whether it's to dust down the chair, whether it's to evangelize, whether it's to minister to the word, whether it is to encourage somebody else, whether it's to be an evangelist, whatever the ministry is, God has a purpose bigger than you. Whatever you are going through, whatever you are waiting on, God has a bigger purpose than you. So while Joseph was waiting... God's purpose was bigger than Joseph. Was bigger than Joseph. And so Joseph, God sent him ahead. Yeah. 
How did God send him? No, watch this. God not easy. God not easy. No, how did God send Joseph? God gave him a dream, first of all. No, he was waiting. No, watch it. God gave Joseph a dream. Joseph got a dream that everything, everybody's going to be bow, bowing to him. He's going to be the leader and whatever. No, he got a dream. How did God get him out? While he was waiting to that, God got him out of the situation. Not out of the situation. God got him out, out there to move towards his purpose. And so, God allowed him to go to him, brother, them. And say, listen, my brother. You know, say, God said this to me. I'm going to see this happen. What happened immediately? Instead of the brothers are happy for him. They were mad. They were mad. Brothers and sisters, don't mad at anybody's ministry. Don't do that. You have a ministry. You have a ministry, man. All of us as Christians have a ministry. Don't, don't, don't bad about people and don't bad mind people and bad mouth people ministries. Listen, man, there's a thing in the name karma. Karma. It will reach you. Don't do that to ministries. Yeah? And so Joseph picked him up. God uses brothers. And so Joseph went out by hatred of his brother. Joseph was sold twice. He was put into prison. God sent him out to a negative situation. Joseph was waiting for his dream to come through. Joseph was waiting for his dream to come true. But while he was waiting for his dream to come true, brothers and sisters, God was doing a bigger thing than Joseph. So you know what? Whatever you're waiting on God for, there's a bigger purpose behind it. There's a bigger thing that is happening behind it in the unseen realm that you are bridging. I, I, you know, it's only a matter if we only get, get the right perspective, brothers and sisters. So remember God is doing a bigger thing. And as I close, while you wait, you must get the right perspective of God. While you wait, you must get the right perspective of God. And I close where I started, Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Isaiah 40. Yes, you must get a right perspective. And it says right here in Isaiah 40. He gives power. Sorry, verse 28. Not yet. Have you not known... I'm talking about while you're awake, having a right perspective. Having a right perspective of God is critical while you wait. And I tell you why. It says, have you not known, have you not heard the Lord, listen to this, the first perspective, he said, it, the Lord is the everlasting God. While you're going through, while you're waiting, Brothers and sisters, you must have the right perspective. The first thing is that he says, he's the everlasting God. Is that your perspective? That God is the everlasting God? Two, the next perspective I see is that he's the everlasting God, the creator of the end of the earth. If he's the creator of the end of the earth, it simply means we can trust waiting on him we must have a, if we don't have the right perspective of god brothers and sisters then we're not gonna wait patiently so the creator of the end of the earth listen to this another perspective of god as you wait he does not faint or grow weary mm. while you wait remember god never faint god never get tired and god never get weary do you have that perspective of God? Understand the unsearchable. That's an ex-perspective. Do you have that perspective that God understands the unsearchable thing, the things that are out there? Do, have you recognized how many things God has delivered you from while you're waiting? You are waiting before God, but you do not know what is happening in the spiritual realm. Oh, the amount of demons and principalities and situations that could have gotten the best of you already. But while you're waiting before God, angels are fighting for us. So you must have a good perspective. 
His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. Do you know that God gives power to those who are weak? That's a perspective. And to him who has no might, he increased their strength. Do you know that God will increase your strength while you wait? Yes. And as I close with this text, but though, but they that wait on the Lord shall strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. There are times we are going to run and not be weary. But there are times we are going to walk. And sometimes, you know what, brothers and sisters? When people walk with you, the journey is easier. Praise God. Have you ever noticed that yet? When people walk with you, the journey is easier. Just try it. You're going to walk five miles. For you alone, brothers and sisters, remember tell you, the journey seems long. But when we were small, we used to walk with our friends and walk go far. And we are walking a top boat, football, we are walking a top boat, running, we are walking a top boat, cowboy and Indian, we are walking a top boat, this and all that. And while we were walking and talking about that, we're frightened, so we reach. You see, when you are walking alone during this period of waiting, it can be difficult. But if we have people who will walk with us during these moments, find somebody. There's most somebody around in Christendom who you can find to walk with you during these moments while you're waiting on God. And if you find that person, thank God and walk with that person. I pray that God will bless you. Yes, my sisters, I'm sure God will shield us. I pray that God will bless you and strengthen you. I pray that God will give you courage. This week we have looked on a whole string of things about waiting on God. I hope that we have learned something along the way. Tomorrow I will close off this week. And next week, we resume with another theme. And for sure, you will see all we'll be sharing next week on whatever theme it is going to be. Let us continue to pray for each other. Let us continue to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Let us pray. Father, forgive us of not learning the heart of waiting. Cleanse us from watching and seeing those who are prospering. And because the, the wicked are prospering, it, it causes us, mighty God, to be jealous after the wicked prosperity and how they are getting through life. But we thank you this morning that you said we are not to watch that, but to wait patiently on the Lord Father you have a bigger purpose for us while we are waiting the sickness is not just about the sickness it's something bigger than that the promotion that has not yet come it's something bigger than that the deliverance that you have been asking and seeking God for God have a bigger plan that, than more than just to deliver you. There's a greater plan for God, for your life. It was for Joseph while Joseph waited for the manifestation of that day when he would have taken over the kingdom. But Lord, there were so many things that happened to Joseph's life that prepare him for the end results. And so I pray God that we will be patient during these these moments of our life, during the process, while we're waiting on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. I pray that you will be strengthened. Pray that you will be encouraged. Pray that you will be guided. And I pray that God will bless you today as you continue to wait on the Lord. Have a wonderful and a God bless Friday. Amen.